What do I take with us when my kids and I head out in snowy winter conditions? Here is a full loadout for a family adventure with temperatures below freezing. Hi everyone, I'm Jason. I've done a couple of recent videos about winter clothing layers and winter camping hacks, stuff to keep you going on a winter's adventure. But I thought I'd just put it all together today. What is going in our packs when the family and I head out into the snow and the cold? Of course, the gear is always going to be activity and weather dependent. Both factors combine to tell me how warm or cold I'm going to be. So let's say this, it's below freezing, it's a day trip, we'll be on the move, and we live in Colorado, so we'll probably be between 9,000 and 14,000 feet, snowshoeing, or hiking, or peak bagging. I always gather my gear up for the family by using the mental model of the 10 essential systems. First is insulation. Think clothing to insulate our bodies from the elements. We've got our non-cotton underwear so that we don't trap any moisture. Synthetic or wool base layers. A lightly insulating but breathable mid-layer top with a soft shell pant. A puffy jacket for when it is really cold or we're stopped. Waterproof shells. Liner gloves and outer gloves or mittens if it's going to be colder and our waterproof boots with both liner and insulating socks. Of course, we can add things like beanies for super cold days or just make sure we have hoods that can layer up as well. We mix and match base layers and mid layers like I talked about in a recent video, but the fundamental layers and accessories are always there. Second is navigation. I typically bring a GPS satellite communicator and a good old map and compass. I like having the modern convenience and having a fail safe that doesn't rely on power. Third, illumination. We each have a headlamp. The sun goes down early in winter, so we need to make sure we can make it back to the trailhead safely if things run a little longer than planned. Fourth is sun protection. A lot of that is covered with clothing, but we each need sunglasses to protect our eyes. You can see my review of Duco Kids sunglasses to find a durable pair that provides enough UV protection. And I make sure to have a sunscreen stick and lip balm for us all to share. It doesn't take as much as there isn't a lot of exposed skin with all of this winter clothing. I think of the fifth, sixth, and seventh systems together. That's just how it works in my head. And those are repair, fire, and first aid. The items that stay on my body are a small knife and a cigarette lighter, which has to stay warm to work well. And I also keep dog poop bags in the top of my pack. I have small humans with me and they don't always wanna go at the ideal time. Heck, it happens to me too. We need to be prepared to pack out our waste. With my tongue firmly in my cheek, I sort of think of poop bags as a first aid of sorts. If we open up the repair slash first aid kit, we find lens defogging compound for those not wearing my air trim mask, more on that in a moment, spare batteries for the headlamps, a fabric tear kit, duct tape, and zip ties. We also find any necessary medications, medical tape, athletic wrap, band-aids and gauze, medical gloves, antibiotic ointment, and various toe, hand, and body warmers. And then we have masks. I tend to think of this as part of medical or first aid because I'm asthmatic. And as I talked about in a couple of my videos, my heat exchange mask helps me not have cold induced asthma attacks. But besides that, as I noted in a video about fogging lenses, I find my mask does a much better job at keeping my lenses from fogging than anything else I've tried. System number eight is food. For a day hike, we like stuff that we can keep warm in our pockets so that we don't break our jaws when we try to eat them. The honey stinger waffles and energy chews are particular favorites. System nine is water, so a warm beverage and an insulating sleeve for everyone. And that leads to system 10, which is shelter. This gets more complicated because there are lots of ways to deal with it in winter. 
on a day hike, this is about emergency shelter. And you can certainly do that with a tent, but at a weight penalty. If you're going someplace with deep snow, you can do that with a shovel, assuming you know how to make a snow cave or trench. But either way, you will still need ways to create heat and trap heat. That means a stove and sleeping insulation. If you saw my video on my three most beneficial winter camping hacks, you will see that putting a hot water bottle in the bottom of a sleeping bag is the most impactful thing my family does to keep us warm. So I need that stove and fuel to boil water. And then I need both an inflatable and foam pad and then my sleeping bag, or as I use, a top quilt. I can make these items work without a tent as an open air bivy. Also, and because my kids are small, I can share an adult size setup with one kid and that would actually keep us both even warmer. But if we get all four of my family out, we need two full adult setups. And then we need to think beyond the 10 essentials and the activity of the outing. And as you've seen sometimes, the boys and I will often also bring out our ice axes, harnesses, ropes, and helmets, but certainly not always. But regardless, I need to think about covering ground on every trip, either as the whole point of the trip or as the approach to a technical climb. Microspikes are always with us. The snowshoes come when we know we'll be coming to new snow or deep snow that requires flotation. And the technical stuff is for, well, technical outings. So I'll put links to the specific gear items I was sharing in the description now that I've shared all the gear that comes with us on these winter adventures. Thanks for coming to the end of this video. Please hit that like button, ring that bell and subscribe. Check out our website at shortguysbetaworks.com to find this and other gear lists, all of our videos and additional thoughts and information. Did I list anything that surprised you? Was anything missing? Let us know what you think in the comment section. Until next week, keep on getting more out of that big outside.